So, uh, hello everyone. My name is, as Zoran said, Mladen Sanovic. I'm really glad to be here and I'm really glad to actually have an opportunity to once again uh, talk about uh, AI in sports. Since last year I was here talking about tennis. I will mention tennis uh, this year too, but we will focus mostly on basketball. And uh, I, I want to give a big shout out to the whole data science conference crew and all the volunteers for making such event possible. And uh, also I uh, noticed on the schedule that uh, this is an uh, hour for sports in the main stage. So I'm looking forward to hear the other talk as well. Uh, yeah, through, through history, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, through history, uh, statistics uh, have always played a major role in, uh, in the world of sports. And uh, also some of us casual fans had their notebooks where they would write some facts, stats or whatever. I mean, I had a few of those actually. Uh, so, yeah, one of uh, th th there are many usages uh, of AI in sports. I mean, I would uh, say that uh, data and AI have always come up together as one. So, and I'm glad to say that uh, at Anatol Solutions, uh, we have many uh, sports projects at the moment and they keep coming. Uh, so one of the uh, major usages of AI in sports is uh, player performance testing. And uh, it is the, the usage where the main, fo main focus is on the player and their performance and uh, trying to find ways to optimize their game. Uh, the other one very important too is pitch performance testing because if you have quality fields, uh, you can also have the conditions to, for that sport to evolve. Uh, another one which I'm going to focus uh, most of today is the rule of violation detection and it can uh, help uh, actually all parties involved. So uh, players, coaches and uh, of course referees as Zoran mentioned. Uh, one, uh, another usage is injury prevention and post-op recovery. It is connected, uh, it is linked to player performance testing but uh, I would uh, count it as, uh, as a different thing because uh, it's, uh, it's mainly, uh, it is mainly AI in uh, sports healthcare. So. Yeah, and of course, with all that data, we have uh, many, many ways to, pr to improve uh, fan experience. So there's entertainment part. Uh, in Anatel, uh, we've had most experience uh, with using a computer vision approach, but there are many approaches to this, to tackle these problems. And uh, yeah, so you can see some of our projects uh, here visualized. And also another approach is uh, sensor-based AI. And uh, we are starting to get involved in that subject as well. Uh, so one of the examples of uh, sensor-based AI projects is, uh, is a type of project where you use a, a smart wristband. And uh, you, uh, I mean, we, we are developing a system where the shots are uh, analyzed, shot quality is analyzed, and uh, the player uh, should receive back the signal if the shot was good or bad, and in that way, uh, players can improve uh, way way faster, and we have also that for we will have also that for tennis. Maybe we'll talk about it next year. Who knows? Uh, so yeah, last year I gave a talk uh, titled uh, "Semantic Segmentation of Tennis Match Videos," and I really really want to start with that one uh, this year too. In short, of course, because it's available online, you can watch it. I think, uh, and of course, you can approach me later if you have anything else to ask me about this tennis project. Uh, but the main thing about this project, and also it gave us a uh, relevant experience for next project, since it was the uh, first project in Anatel uh, considering sports. And um, yeah, so uh, the main thing about this project, uh, I mean, how we actually started to do this, uh, we uh, had collaboration with a professional tennis player, and uh, in meetings with uh, with him, uh, uh, we we settled for the for for some goal. And we noticed that uh, the players were lacking uh, some tools that uh, could help them analyze their game or their opponent's game uh, way faster because there were no, uh, not a single tool that will allow them to just skip the idle parts of tennis matches and just watch interesting parts like breakpoints, match points, etc. As we can see here, we have developed a, a system like that uh, that you can uh, have a four, I mean, you have now four category of points where you can choose whether you want to watch winners, uh, break points, set points, uh, or uh, you want to sort points by uh, rally length. Uh, so, yeah, here is the example of that. Uh, after we have segmented the matches, uh, the match into single points, then we wanted to analyze those uh, points uh, separately. So we wanted to see what we can do and we have uh, 
we are able now to follow, to track the ball, to track players and uh, their strokes, I mean, to recognize their strokes and also to detect court. Uh, we can also detect ball bounces and its speed, of course, when you have this little thing there. Um, so yeah, we have a raw match video in the beginning and the annotated match video in the end. That's the whole point. And this, uh, these are the action recognition methods we have used uh, later in the later phases of the project. I won't get into that uh, much here, but uh, I want to emphasize that we, of course, pose estimation methods were used in order to achieve this uh, stroke recognition uh, models, to implement those models. Uh, the last thing I want to talk um, from last year is uh, how we have, uh, I mean, that we have used the ball bounce detection methods. So how we done that, we have uh, analyzed the 2D ball trajectory. We have simplified it using some algorithms. And then we uh, were finding uh, some turning points using some uh, heuristic, I mean, uh, some uh, algorithm for that, and then heuristics to discard bad candidates. And uh, I will get back to that uh, later. So this time last year, we were approached by Vladimir Lucic, mentioned uh, previously, uh, from Imperial College London, uh, who, who came to us with an idea to implement uh, rule detection relation system on uh, training sessions uh, for, uh, for basketball training sessions. And uh, we needed to uh, settle uh, in the beginning with one, uh, with one rule. We need to choose one rule. And uh, by implementing uh, uh, violation detection for that rule, it would be pretty reasonable to think that uh, we can uh, analyze other rules as well. So we had to choose, uh, had to choose non-trivial and non-subjective rule. And by non-subjective, I mean that uh, we need to, I mean, we didn't want to get into personal fouls and stuff that can get really awkward uh, if you ask some referees and players and everyone involved. Uh, so yeah, we have chosen a pivoting for that. And I hope many of you already know what pivoting is, but of course I will uh, give you some uh, examples of that. Uh, I won't get into each possible scenario for pivoting because it is, uh, it can get complicated. And um, yes, uh, so we know that players are uh, like uh, have only some, uh, I mean, they're limited in a way they can play the game. They have to follow some rules. And uh, when they dribble the ball, they need to bounce it uh, on, on the floor uh, and with one hand. And uh, when, whenever they stop, they are not allowed to start the dribble again, but they are allowed to pivot. And uh, there are two main cases of pivoting. Uh, one being when the player is progressing, and then after catching the ball, he uh, stops for a shot, uh, for a shot or for a pass. And the other case is uh, where the player is progressing, catching the ball, and then just continue uh, with uh, with the dribble. So we will uh, focus uh, on the, in this talk on this case one: progressing player stop, shoot, pass, and. Uh, yeah. So now you can imagine a player running uh, without a ball, and then he receives the ball. And first uh, step he makes at that point uh, is uh, his zero. I mean, his or she's zero step. And uh, if we consider that to be a left foot, the other foot to land on the floor uh, is uh, is his pivot foot. And again, he can uh, or she uh, can uh, place uh, another uh, another time his left foot uh, on the floor. And uh, when when the, the player stops, uh, she, he is now uh, allowed to to pivot. Uh, so once he is in that position, he can move his non-pivot leg uh, how many times they want, but they just need to, uh, that pivot foot needs to stay on the ground. And uh, whenever they lift their pivot foot, they need to uh, release the ball uh, before that uh, foot is placed back on the floor. Another simple, I mean, similar to this is only when the player is, uh, receives the ball and both of the, their feet is already on the ground, so he can choose uh, whichever foot they'd like to, to be the pivot foot. So here's a video uh, showing this. So his uh, zero step is made by his left foot. Pivot foot is his right foot, then making another step with left foot, and then lifting pivot foot and uh, releasing the ball before touching again the floor with that right pivot foot. Here is an illegal move. Yeah, it's basically the same, only he lifts the, the, the pivot foot and placing it back on the floor and then releasing the ball. Uh, so yeah, of course, like in every project, we needed some data in the beginning to in order to start our uh, work. And uh, uh, the data was obtained by our uh, partner, uh, Vladimir. And uh, we have uh, got some videos containing all possible scenarios in, in, uh, in different settings. 
and the videos contained uh, one player uh, in the training session uh, filmed with a with a static camera, which is a part of the deal. Uh, so, for uh, one of the main crucial things uh, in, in the beginning was to detect ball, of course, and uh, for that we have used YOLO. And I guess many of you already know that YOLO is, uh, you know, like a safe bet for uh, object, real-time object detection. Uh, many times, so we have uh, trained on a few thousand images uh, with ball, and uh, we have got overall great results and uh, used that model in the later phases of the of the model. We had only one problem with occlusions because when uh, the player can occlude the ball with the, with, with the body. And we solved this uh, just by using cubic interpolation and I mean, it looks smooth and pretty and uh, we were satisfied with that too. Um, so you, you can remember that we, uh, I've I mentioned this uh, ball bounce detection. So we have used this, uh, this here. We have used it to estimate uh, some key moments of ball trajectory. And uh, you can see that we are able to see where, where, when the ball bounces, when it's in the player's hands, and also the moment when the ball leaves the player's hands is also caught here. Yeah, this is only the video showing the trajectory, I mean, not showing the trajectory of the ball, but it is the trajectory from the previous slide. Not that interesting. I'm just trying to. Yeah. So pose estimation now. Uh, yeah. Given our experience with uh, our tennis project, uh, there were no reason not to use alpha pose again. We just uh, needed to play a bit with parameters, and uh, we were overall again satisfied. We we're always satisfied. And uh, now uh, we, yeah, we we we've done that, and then we uh, track poses through all frames, and then we. Since uh, many videos contained uh, multiple people uh, in the video, as you can see here, some spectators. So the the, the poses of there of that spect those spectators are also found, and we needed to filter those poses. And uh, the player's pose is considered to be the most dynamic one. Of course, there is a problem with uh, with occlusion here uh, as as well. Uh, some joints are missing when the player is uh, turned turn his back to the to the camera. And uh, we also, in the similar fashion as for the ball, we estimate those missing joints. But actually, it turned out that the system works uh, basically the same if you uh, estimate those joints or not. I mean, there were there there were enough information, even not approximating those joints. Uh, and uh, after mentioning those two crucial things, uh, this was the concept we have introduced uh, to. To be able to 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 analyze uh, and combine those two and to to detect whether there was a pivot pivot violation or not, so we call it the player state machine, and I think the name really says it all. Uh, but yeah, basically it is the system where you want to it each and every moment to know uh, what the player is doing. Is he dribbling? Is he pivoting or releasing the ball, or has he not have the ball in his possession yet? Uh, we have uh, three main states, no possession, possession, and violation. Uh, possession also contains some sub-states uh, like dribble and pivot, of course. And uh, actually, violation is also no possession state, because since you make a uh, violation, you you get no possession. But uh, I have uh, put it like this here, so for the sake of clarity, I think so. Uh, okay, the default state is no possession. Uh, and uh, once the player catches the ball, we are in uh, initial pivot state. We, we, are, we are moved there. And uh, there are a few uh, important things happening in, the, in that state. We need to detect which, which foot is the pivot foot. So how we do that? I mean, we, we, we know that player have uh, two legs, two feet. So we know that there is a you know, like 50-50 chance to be accurate. And uh, I mean, we need we don't have to be 100% sure in, in any of the outcomes. We just need to be more sure in some of those outcomes. I mean, we need to use uh, parameters we get we got, like uh, all those I mentioned before, but also some derived parameters from the, those we, we have. So we use uh, something like, uh, of course, joint angles, distance from ball to hands, uh, uh, trajectory of the of all crucial joints and stuff like that. And we just need to lean on the right side. And basically, we always do. 
Uh, I mean, it works uh, every time, and uh, it's actually never really close to 50-50 scenario where you would really need to choose by random. Um, yeah, so after pivot state, we are, tr we are following the, the flare player's footsteps, and we detect uh, by using definitions uh, from uh, FIBA's website uh, to detect whether there was a violation or not. So if, if there was a violation, I mean, the, some, if some rules were, uh, I mean, I talked about those rules, I, I want to mention them again. So if the, if the pivot foot is uh, lifted and placed back on the floor before the ball is released, uh, you, you are violated the rule and then you go to violation state. But if not, if there is no travel, there are two possible options. You can go to no possession state, uh, where the process starts back again. And uh, if you continue with your dribble, you're, of course, uh, moving to possession dribble state. And once you are there, you will have a chance to, yeah, once again pivot if you stop. But also, uh, you can uh, release the ball whenever you want, so you go, go to no possession state and the process starts again. So here we can see one example of our system, and I mentioned that we were focused only on the uh, situations where the player uh, is stopping his dribble. So we see here that, uh, yeah, so his zero foot is made by his, uh, his zero step is made by his left foot, and then his uh, right foot becomes its, his pivot foot, and uh, he does the job correctly. He spins around the, that uh, right uh, foot, and pass the pole before even lifting that foot. And since uh, everything is right, there is no violation. There is no travel detected. I, I, I don't think I mentioned, but travel is the violation of pivoting rule and something else. But yeah, for the sake of this presentation, it is that. Um, this is a, ne a negative example where we see where the traveling is detected. So uh, his pivot foot is uh, left foot here. And we see he's moving that fit all over the place. So basically, it's a, it's a simple travel. Yeah, uh, I already mentioned some use cases, but there are, there are many use cases even for this uh, system. It can be used by players to, in a way to, to, to optimize uh, their game and to, like, to watch multiple uh, scenarios of uh, players violating that rule. And uh, also, that learning by example is uh, valuable for coaches too because they can uh, give the young players uh, important information and many examples of, uh, of violated rule. And also, I mean, we know that in, uh, in uh, training sessions of basketball, uh, you, you cannot keep an eye on each and every young player on the field. So uh, if you have this kind of system, uh, each player would uh, receive a feedback uh, for each of their moves, for each of the, their technical drills they, they, they're doing. So, and we know that uh, giving feedback uh, to young players is, is really important. I mean, it's really important to, at the young age to know what you're doing and if you're doing it right. And one of, uh, of course, most obvious one uh, uh, use case is for referees, where this system, once it uh, you know, like evolves in uh, being able to, to use this kind of system in a professional basketball match, uh, it can help uh, referees to, to, to signal pivoting violation or any other violation, non-subjective. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's basically it for this. And uh, so we have seen some, um, yeah, we have seen some, uh, some projects we, we, we are doing at Anatel Solutions. And uh, I hope there will be more and it will be interesting to, to present to you maybe once again, something about sports to develop this even further. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, of course, I'll try to answer. I will, of yeah. course, plenty of questions. So uh, you did it only in in laboratory, if I can say this way. Yeah, you can say. So like you, you, you put didn't it like try that. it in. Uh, you didn't try it in the real in the real game. Yeah, I mean, I have even tried for it. fun to see how it works. Yeah, I mean, it's a mess because you know, I mean, you. you that, that's you need what to... we want you to resolve. That mess. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, this is uh, the situation where you are uh, working in a, as you said, in a laboratory environment, when you have uh, one player doing its job, doing it right or wrong, and you need to detect it. But when you have uh, 10 people uh, on the basketball field, so many occlusions are happening. And uh, you, you But in, in this case, you are, you are basically following the ball, because most of the violations, except for the 
personal fouls, they are happening when you have the ball in your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so it's not, it shouldn't be that difficult because you monitor the ball and then you see the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's basically, you know, like one liner. So, uh, so, yeah, I mean, you need to follow and track the ball, but also you need to, to track players' pose. And uh, I haven't talked uh, in depth how actually we, I mean, someone may be, you know, like uh, suspicious, how how you even know when the player is holding the ball. Well, we do that. I, I cannot disclose everything we, we've done, uh, of course. Oh, come uh, on. Yeah, we can talk maybe later. But, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but, but so you need to follow the ball, you need to follow the player, and you need, you need to combine those two using that pressure state, player state machine. I mean, it's really a nice thing because using that player state machine, just by uh, adding some additional conditions, you would be able to like, implement some, some other rules as well. Okay, so questions. That was one. <clears throat> Peter Kočović and Daniel Nikolic, we were ex uh, basketball referees national range, and uh, you made you made per perfect presentation. Really, your work is uh, quite okay. Thank you. But I <laughs> Thank you. Except except two Thank things. You very much. Except two things. Yeah. FIBA rule number 25.2 about oh. pivot. It's uh, from the FIBA's world of basketball coaches. So. No, no, no. This yeah. is from the official okay, basketball okay, okay. rules. A pivot is a legal movement in which a player who is holding a live ball on the court steps once or more than once in any direction with the same foot while the other foot called the pivot foot is kept at the point of contact with the court. This is official definition. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in one uh, one movie, this is the middle of the of your presentation. Ah, you got some. Okay. You showed that three uh, <clears throat> touches are with 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 the. Uh, 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 maybe somewhere here. Uh -huh, uh, ne never mind. You mean the explanatory uh, video or? Yes, yes, yes. The rule. You you made mistake, but we will show it to you. Here, here. <laughs> yeah, we're here to learn. You too. have no look. When you when you take live ball. <laughs> Does anybody have a ball? No, no, no problem, no problem. Yeah. When you take live ball, yeah, you have without dribbling. Yeah, yeah, of course. You have to make in any direction. Yeah. Steps with. Yeah, as mentioned. Another, this is okay. But another thing, you have to make three contact with the floor on the following way. First contact is yeah, yeah. parallel with two legs and is the one it's the make. one scenario. But, but it's no, not no, there but you may you show here that you have to make three touches one by one, but what is not possible. What, what three touches? Three touch, three contacts of, of, of foot with the with the with the. Well, no, maybe this 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 was the first uh, from this. This side. is the legal one, and this is, this was the the legal one. No, you you mentioned legal, but this was illegal. Other all others were okay. Never mind. Okay, so we we'll figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> and also, if I can announce next year, Madan is doing wrestling. <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, Another There's question, also, sorry. For me. Well, it is that uh, data science question. Uh, <laughs> it's about that the... That was data science too, I mean. Well, uh, uh, first of all, a uh, very interesting presentation, and I'm really proud that, that, that the basketball team is uh, here on the floor, on, on the main stage. Uh, and uh, I, I have two questions. The, the first one, is what, what is the purpose of this uh, project? What is it? use case, maybe if, if Professor Vladimir is here, he will explain. And the second one is uh, one thing which is uh, for me, uh, as, a, as a founder of Basketball, basketball Lab, Couch Coach, uh, much more interested, is that uh, you can uh, uh, measure time, uh, how long is, is the ball on the possession of, of each player. Yeah. So first and, question. Uh, that kind, kind of data, is it right now uh, available through, through a, 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 any kind of uh, maybe NBA stream or uh, EuroLeague stream? To mm -hmm. How long uh, one player is yeah, yeah. I get. In, the, in the possession? Possession of yeah, the ball, yeah. 
Yeah, All the so, ball. So first question was about the use case and uh, the purpose. I mean, the purpose of this project was to show that uh, it is doable. So we can see that in uh, laboratory condition, we can, uh, we can detect everything. And we have only one camera. And when you have more cameras filming from all angles, you have, of course, more data and more information about uh, what's happening there. So if we have maybe three or four players, maybe the ball or the player would be so, include, uh, so occluded. But with using only one camera from the appropriate angle, you would be able to analyze that move too. So by adding more angles, you would be able to get more information, more data, and be able to solve this in uh, some more complicated environments. Uh, that's the main purpose of the project, to, uh, to detect, to show and prove that it is doable. And I mean, it, it showed that it is. And about the, um, the next question, yeah, about uh, tracking, tracking the ball, yeah. Tracking the ball, I mean, that is the possession of the ball, yeah. Possession of the ball by each player, that is actually, I mean, uh, if, if, if I continue to talk about the, the, the previous case where you in involve more cameras, then it would be doable to, to do that. But, but now, I think it is really, really challenging. I think NBA teams have their own uh, st statistic teams that, that does that. And I have uh, listened to some interviews by their data scientists. Uh, and um, it is really coming to, to, to fruition, all this uh, work and all this data. Uh, but um, following each player and uh, tracking uh, how much of time is in, uh, exactly that player is in possession, I think it's a really, really hard problem. And if you ask me, I mean, it, it would take many, many resources, much more than uh, we had for the, this project. So yeah, I think it's doable, but with, with a lot of resources, with a lot of time and a lot of angles, it is, it is the most critical point. Because the ball is almost, almost uh, in, in, in each other frame occluded if you're uh, watching that live uh, video. And you know that. <laughs> Any Thank more you. questions? I was expecting more questions about this. In the sports. land of basketball. I mean, uh, I, can, I can add only, only one more, and that will be sort of the connection with the next presentation. Yeah. yeah. Would it be, and how uh, useful would it be if the players were wearing any sensors and stuff? Yeah, I was actually. I, I mean, was actually... Would, do you think it, that might be ob uh, the obligation in the future? Well, uh, in some professional uh, tournaments, probably. I mean, we see that now at, uh, in the Champions League, they, they're uh, using some uh, semi-automatic offside uh, regulation. So the players are wearing sensors in uh, key, some uh, key points of the body. And uh, we have seen uh, numerous times uh, by now uh, how exactly that uh, improve the process of VAR, which is everyone annoyed when you know, like uh, the scoring uh, of a goal is uh, delayed by two or three minutes. And by, sense, by using sensors, you would be able to analyze it uh, like in, a, in an instant. And uh, with, uh, I, I was just talking about that for using sensors in basketball. I mean, there are less players, only 10 players on the field. I mean, OK, 12 players, uh, including the bench. But uh, let's say 24 sensors you, you, you'd need. And uh, I mean, even fouls would be so detectable if you would uh, have a sensor here and you hit, were hit in, in the hand. It is non natural move, so it would be easily detectable if, uh, you know, like, also simulation would be easily detectable. So, I mean, you, you cannot move uh, your own body in some ways. You, you cannot. <laughs> yes, so, well, the model can predict yeah, yeah. how, yeah, yeah. how so does the, it the model would use that sensor data, and uh, who knows, maybe we'll even try it with the, our little wristbands, like detecting a foul on the right hand or something like that. Okay. Any more questions? We're continuing. There's the, there's the second half coming yeah, after, after Mladen, so just immediately. Mladen, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>